In today's video, we're going to be talking about why curiosity is a sin. And before I get to that, I'm just going to start things off with a confession. That is, namely, that these past two weeks I have not been nearly as productive, neither as I would have liked to have been, nor as I should have been. And I was spending some time thinking about this because, you know, I've been, I've been moving houses. This is not where I'm actually staying. Um, I don't know where I'm going to be staying the next couple of weeks. Um, but despite that, that's not actually the reason I didn't get stuff done. The reason I did not get stuff done is because of curiosity. And that's, that's what I want to talk to you about in today's video and explain why I do believe that curiosity is a sin. Now, when I say that, I mean that curiosity is a sin in the etymological sense of it is missing the mark. It truly is. It's something that could lead us somewhere good, but in and of itself, it is sinful. And perhaps here I'll turn to the fact that the Catholic Church has always considered curiosity vice. Now, they do this at the same time that they uphold the pursuit of knowledge and truth as, as one of the greatest goods that someone can, can pursue, that someone can dedicate their life to. So how do they square that circle? How do they simultaneously, uh, simultaneously say that curiosity is bad but at the same time, the pursuit of knowledge and truth is good. Well, in order to illustrate that, I'd like to, to turn to an analogy of sorts. And perhaps this is a situation that you found yourself in at some point in time, hopefully not too often. It used to happen a lot to me. Um, but I'm sure it's something you know because it's something that I, I certainly know and have experienced many a time. Now, this situation, let's say it's a... I don't know, a Thursday afternoon, either like a Thursday or a Saturday, whether it's work week or, or not, that can be up to you. And it's an afternoon, maybe about 2 to 4 p.m., okay? Now, you've had lunch earlier on in the day. You know, it, it, was, it was okay, but it wasn't really substantive. Now you're finding yourself a little bit hungry. But dinner's still a couple hours away. So what do you do? You realize, all right, I'm kind of hungry. And so you go to the pantry and open something up to snack. You go and maybe find a, a protein bar of some sorts, snack bar. You go and you have it and you're like, okay, that's great. But before you know it, you end up being hungry again because that bar for as good as it is, it, it's, it doesn't offer real true substance. And so you go back into the pantry, you would have an other you know, protein bar if you could, but there's nothing else there. But maybe there is a bag of pretzels or something. So you pick that up, you begin to snack. And what you find is that actually snacking, that makes you more hungry. And so you keep on getting up and you're never fully satiated. You, you keep on going back to the pantry looking for things. Eventually you exhaust your options there, you go to the fridge. Maybe it's a yogurt, maybe it's some, some carrots even, maybe it's you know s some fruit that you pick up. It could be any of these things. But essentially you, you get into this rhythm of almost this momentum of snacking that that whets the appetite but never fully satisfies it. And so you, you keep on indulging in this. Um, there's different shades of meaning to that word, by the way. Um, but you keep on indulging in this, and sooner or later, before you know it, dinner rolls around. And now dinner rolls around, and you had originally in mind something to, to cook, something that was going to be a good meal, you know, a, a really well put together oven baked chicken, some roasted vegetables, some rice. But by the time you get to dinner, you realize that you're just not, you're simply not hungry anymore. And you know, okay, it's dinner time, so maybe I had, should have some other stuff. And you kind of continue to snack throughout the evening. Now, I'm sure as I'm sharing this analogy, you can probably get a grasp more or less of what I'm wanting to say. Which is that true knowledge true knowledge that makes a meaningful impact in one's life, that's, that's truly nourishing, that has the vitamins and minerals and healthy carbs and proteins that we need to sustain ourselves. That is the meal, that, that true knowledge that is the, the real dinner meal. However, curiosity in this example is, is akin to snacking. 
Curiosity is rather, actually. It's more so a hunger. Now, it's a hunger that, again, when directed well, can lead us to good things, but left alone by itself, left to be simply curiosity, it does not lead us down a good path. What it leads us to is intellectual snacking. It, it leads us to pursuing things that, that feel good in the moment and to our degree are satisfying. Uh, things that we are learning. We're browsing through Wikipedia or Reddit and, and learning these things or YouTube videos. We've technically learned something, okay, but does that knowledge make a meaningful impact in our life? Is this something that's going to make an honest difference five years from now? Now, of course, this isn't to say that we can never pursue any sort of knowledge that, or that we can only pursue the sort of knowledge that's going to continue to make an impact in our life five years from now. But I think, at least in my life, and perhaps you can be in agreement with this, is that we far too often run the risk of indulging in, in, in the option of, of intellectual snacking. Not many of us are, are overly disciplined to the fact of we don't permit ourselves any of that. I think, uh, at least if I can speak for myself, I err towards the side of, of intellectual snacking, unfortunately. But I think that's the natural human tendency because that's easier to do. It's those quicker hits of dopamine that come up. And it feels good in the moment, but it doesn't actually change ourselves later on. So, what is the solution to this? Well, I, I'd like to propose that the solution is something called studiousness. Studiousness is knowledge pursued with diligence, with discipline, and for the right reasons. So, studiousness, knowledge pursued, with diligence, discipline, and for the right reasons. Now, studiousness, as opposed to curiosity, is and has always been a virtue. And the reason this is is because studiousness leads us to knowledge that actually makes a life-changing and meaningful impact. Now, I know, I'm sure you can attest to this in your own life, but in my life, for example, there are, without a doubt, moments of studiousness, periods of studiousness, I should say, that have led to truly life-changing things. For example, my, my learning of, of foreign languages. Um, when I was in university, there was one semester that I dedicated to learning French. And I'd get up every day and study for, for two hours, at, at the very minimum. And I did that for an entire semester. It's, it's one of the most disciplined kind of periods of my entire life. But that led to a life-changing event where now I've gone on to, to do different things, but essentially that kick-started a series of events that led to me living in Europe. And, and that's no small thing in terms of, of how that changes one's life. And so there's that. There's also been the times that, the afternoons that I spent trying to memorize poetry. That might sound silly, but to me, the, these are things that I, I've, I've learned them to a degree to which they they remain with me. They resonate with me over time. There have been so many moments in life, the most random moments, where something will come to mind and I can think on a poem, and it, and it really actually helps me in that moment. And so I would say that, that those things, the things that require discipline and studiousness, led to truly impacting my life in a way that I, I simply can't tie the dots back to anything in which mere curiosity accomplished the same thing. And so, if true knowledge, again going back to this analogy, is akin to, to a meal, then it's inherent that it requires discipline. Because what do we want to do when we make a meal? Well, we go and we, we have to look up the ingredient list. We have to go and get those ingredients. We have to go home and prepare those ingredients. We have to make sure we have the right tools at our disposal, the right dishware. We have to know, have a familiarity with our oven. I'm glancing into the kitchen right now as I'm saying all this. Um, we have to know that you know we, we have what it takes to grill the vegetables on the stove, that we have the right oils and spices to prepare something in the oven. Um, a lot of work goes into this. And then that's, that's, again, not to mention the actual time that it takes to prepare and execute that dish. But 
what we get at the end of all of it is, is a meal that is truly sustaining. It, it's sustantive. It, it, it gives us, again, the vitamins and minerals that we need to, to go about and operate healthfully in life. It gives us that, again, the, the vegetables, the protein, the complex carbs, the stuff that, that our body runs off of and that is nourishing to us. And so knowledge, in the same respect, is, is very much the same thing. But it requires studiousness. And so uh, I think at, at this point I, I run perhaps the chance of, of beating this dead horse. So I'm going to conclude this. And in doing so, I'm going to go back to my confession from earlier and saying that, look, these past two weeks, I have not accomplished nearly as much of, I, as much of what I would have liked to accomplish. Sorry. Um, and the reason for that is not because of moving house. It's not because of, you know, work and stuff that's going on. It's, it's because of curiosity, if I'm being honest with myself. I had moments in which I could have read the books I wanted to read. I could have worked on the videos that I wanted to work on. I could have memorized the poetry that I wanted to memorize. But no, curiousness distracted me. And I have almost nothing to show for it, save this video, which I hope impacts you to some degree. So to, to conclude all this, I'll, I'll simply say that I myself am going to be reflecting on the areas of my life in which I have been curious in the sense of intellectually snapping. And I would encourage you to do the same. And I would encourage you to reflect on those areas of life and then to also ask yourself the question, where, which of these areas can I transform into studiousness? How can I take this curiosity and not allow it to remain as mere curiosity, but to transform it into studiousness? Knowledge pursued through diligence and discipline and pursued for the right reasons. Where can I do that? Because once you do, I guarantee you that you, you won't regret it. It's a, it's a worthwhile pursuit. Because the deeply impactful knowledge and experience and wisdom that we gain through studiousness, well, that is what, what truly, and I mean truly, leaves a meaningful impact on others, ourselves, and our society as a whole. I hope this video was of some help to you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and stay tuned for all the stuff that's to come in August and September. I'm really thrilled for what this channel is about to start putting out. I hope you'll join us for that ride. In the meantime, have a great week. Talk to you later.